Hello everyone and welcome back to the YouTube audiobook series for The Forbidden Truth, written by Abby Mathias. I am Abby Davis and today I am introducing Chapter 16. If you missed Chapter 15 or would like to go back to other episodes of this book, links in the description below along with the playlist. And if you are all caught up and ready to go, we will continue on with Chapter 16, Old Tricks. As I allowed Abby and Damien to sit at a table by themselves, I decided to find a spot near the back wall of the restaurant. Of course, I chose one nearest to a wall, but it also created a clear visual of my protector child sitting across the way happier than ever. Hell, it was almost like she was glowing brightly, and I knew it was because of her heightened adrenaline. Sex affects people differently depending on what time you do it. Of course it's tiring and all, but it could wake you up nicely in the morning or afternoon. Or it can knock you out cold after you're done and allow you a good night's rest. It's also proven that sex helps relieve stress, and for the ladies it can help with period cramps. During intercourse, each brain releases endorphins and oxytocin which creates feelings of relaxation and intimacy. So realistically, it could help with anxiety and depression as well but there are still complications when going that deep into health concerns. That is besides the point, though. Abby had sex with Damien, and I wanted to know the story behind it. Not that I wanted descriptive details. I more wanted to know what led her to do that. I can still remember back in September how scared she was at the thought of even dating him. Yet now she broke all kinds of barriers and popped her cherry after a little over four months of dating him. The other question I wanted to make sure of was if she used protection. Now, I'm sure that they did. Abby isn't that foolish, but I more wanted to know her feelings about everything. This was something new to her, and my mind couldn't stop thinking about how she's reacting on the inside. Over the past few months, she has managed to hide her emotions enough by using a facade. With that result... I needed to ask her my questions and settle my curiosity at a later time. As of this moment, my mind had to focus on something else. So I very quickly teleported myself to my house to grab my powers book. My other objective while we were out and about was to learn more about Abby's intangibility power. I told her that I would read and understand the full extent of her new ability back within her bedroom. Plus... I had nothing else better to do for the time being while I waited for the lovebirds to leave the establishment. It was a good time to catch up on my knowledge. Therefore, once I made it back to my post, I opened the book and began to sift through the pages. A couple minutes passed as words filled my head, but eventually I found the right information on page 40 and read its contents thoroughly. The power of intangibility is only gifted to those of extreme uniqueness. A demon or succubus must show their pure intent and stay that way, as the ability is one of the most powerful ones within the hellish realm. Intangibility allows a person to phase through any and all objects within any kind of realm. This power can also be formed into an energy and spread it to any desired target the host wishes. People with this power are normally tended to be spies because of the rareness of it. However, it's at the discretion of the beholder to how they would like to use it. After reading that, I kind of froze in place reflecting. My protector child wasn't supposed to have powers to begin with. If she wasn't dead, why would she have a powerful one? I mean, it stated that the being had to have pure intent. How much pure can you get? A religious girl who tried to help everyone she encountered. She truly didn't have no ill will. Yet this information was going to impact her tremendously. Abby was already uneasy about having supernatural abilities. Now with having a powerful one, she is going to feel more awkward about herself. Mostly, she would probably freak out. Another thing, it was impressive how she thought about making the closet door incorporeal for me to walk through. I didn't think she would react that fast to activate the power without having that knowledge. Regardless of her quick thinking, 
Knowing those facts, I came to the conclusion that it was going to take a lot of time for her to control that power within her demon body. Excuse me, is this seat taken? A random male voice asked loudly. I looked up from my book to see a man with blonde hair standing right in front of my table. He was clearly facing me as he wore a dark green shirt and black pants. He looked extremely formal and for some reason was seeing me. How and why confused the hell out of my mind. So much, in fact, that I had to ask the gentleman if he was talking to me. I'm sorry? Are you talking to me? Of course I am. You seemed a little lonely, and I figured I would give you some company. Upon his response, he started to smirk slightly as we both made eye contact. From just that glance, I recognized the eye color and realized why he could see me. For staring back at me with the same yellowish-green eyes from my deal-making nightmares, this was Satan within a human form, and I grew furious. I began to grit my teeth for a bit before I realized I had to play nice again. So taking a deep breath, I closed my book and gestured to the chair across from me. Please, sir, have a seat. I would be honored. Satan. Before he sat down, he gave out a light chuckle and pulled out the chair. Well, you most certainly caught on me fast. What gave it away? That human form can't disguise your eyes or devilish smile, especially if it's burned into my memory. Plus, no human can see me up here. You even said so yourself. Touché. It's about time you caught on. After that, he leaned back in his chair and started to relax. What are you doing up here? What do you want to discuss? I have nothing in particular. I am just here to observe your progress and catch up since our last billiards game. Which again, I am sorry I had to hurt you. It's good to see that you recovered from it scarless. Even though I don't understand your logic sometimes, I won't argue about it. I'm fully healed, and that's what matters. I said refusing to accept his apology. My body and mind were in sync upon that agreement. I don't even think my mouth would allow such accepting words to come out after all he has done. Yet I still had to act like everything was good between us. So that was the closest statement I could say to show my kindness. Satan then smiled fully and gazed to the right to find my protector child sitting at her booth with another person. I noticed the gaze and glanced over myself to ensure Abby didn't see this interaction. I even tapped into her hearing to find out she was talking about the demon cosplay of myself she made. She was too focused on conversing with Damien to know what was happening, which made me somewhat relieved. Who's Abby with? He asked, pointing at the booth. I paused slightly, making sure I didn't tell him the true answer. Yet after a quick second, I responded with, Her friend Richard. They are out to lunch, and I didn't want to bother her with my presence. That's why I'm in this back corner. Ah, I see. That's why you have the Protector Demon Powers book with you. To entertain yourself while you wait? I wouldn't call it entertainment. It's research to fully understand the aspects of my powers. As you are probably aware, this is how I gained the information instead of trying to ask you. With my statement as right hand and arm twitched in anger or frustration, I couldn't tell which one. Yet his facial expression stayed calm and collected like it has been surprisingly. Well, as of this point, I will help you as best I can. That was the old me, and I don't want that to affect our revitalized report. Then since you said that, what can you tell me about intangibility? I asked, trying to find verification within his statement. At first, Satan's eyes widened a bit as he swallowed hard. However, within a span of a few seconds, he spoke. I can tell you that it is a hell of a power to have but hard to control at first. 
A lot of demons overall phase through everything initially. Some have actually died because they fell through the ground and couldn't deactivate the power. All in all, it's one of the most useful abilities a citizen can have. You need any more information? I take as much as you can give me. I admit it's still stunned about the facts he spewed, yet I was still aware of an angle he was trying to obtain. If there was one thing I knew, it was that Satan always deluded his victim with lies in order to gain his desired knowledge. Whether if it was playing nice or bribing his sitting duck, he somehow always conjured his truest motive. I myself have fallen victim to this charade too many times. That was something I would never let happen again. I mean, I'm pretty sure that book of yours explains it fairly well. The recipient of intangibility conveys through anything possible. Hell, they can even project the power onto others to give them the same thing for a certain amount of time. There's not much more I can tell you besides my experience with it. That is besides the point, though. When did you gain this talent of yours? Just this morning. I said, lying again to my creator. I faced through Abby's bedroom door without trying to. Yet I haven't had the problem of falling through the earth. Well, consider yourself lucky for the time being. Eventually it will happen. But with you having the ability to teleport to your protector child, you shouldn't have a problem dying by it. After his statement... I kindly nodded my head, showing my understanding, and sat silent afterwards. To be honest, my mind thought the occupant across the table was going to start another topic of conversation between us. However, he actually allowed the restaurant ambiance to sound the air. That was until the same waitress that was serving Abby and Damien began to walk over to our area. Hello, my name is Michelle, and I will be taking care of you today. What would you like to drink for this afternoon? We will both have your best whiskey drink you have on the menu. That would be our whiskey mania. Very nice choice. Is that okay for you too, madam? Uh, sure. I replied back. However, as I heard the voice come out of my mouth, I began to panic internally. For the voice I heard was the female version of myself. How was that possible? I had absolutely no clue. Yet after the waitress confirmed our drinks and walked away, I glared at Satan as he smiled slightly. Dread and repulsion filled my stomach, as the expression upon his face only meant trouble was afoot. Sorry, pal. I had to make a few adjustments to you in order to not be detected by these puny humans. I hope you're not too mad. Suddenly, after those words... My vision wavered to where I had to rub my eyes to adjust them back to their original optics. Yet as I regained my sight, I realized that I was now that female version of myself. Darla was once more in the flesh, and I wasn't the one to bring her to life. The proof of that was my clothes shifted and displayed more feminine features rather than staying baggy upon my body. Upon the discovery... I gazed back up at my enemy and began to give him the stink eye. What the hell, Satan? I scolded. Seth, if people can see us, it might be wise to use our human names, right? At his remark, I clenched my hands and closed my eyes tight to not shout. He had a very logical point, and I didn't need to sound like a lunatic. So as I held my tongue, I rephrased myself. What the hell, Seth? What makes you think this is okay? I thought you said we were done with these old tricks. I am. This was only to benefit both of us. I couldn't give you a new form without my spellbook, and it would be very painful for you again. I was able to give you that female vessel because I have gifted it to you already. If I could have easily given you a different body, I would have. So, sadly, you will have to deal with it for the time being. At this very moment, all I wanted to do was stand up and slap him straight in the face. He knew how uncomfortable this form made me, 
Regardless of all the times I have gone out with Abby as the opposite gender, that didn't mean I was content with the idea of it. I only tolerated the form for my protector child because she didn't make things awkward. She always respected who I was physically and has never intentionally made me feel embarrassed about my situation. Unlike Satan as he was now staring at my breasts as they bulged outward and showed a little cleavage because of the top button missing on my shirt. That was typical for formal women's shirts. However, I was not about to let this mishap overtake my confidence. Hey, my eyes are up here. Show some respect, please. Upon my outburst, Satan shook his head and actually refocused his sight back onto my face. My apologies, Darla. Can't help that it's out in the open and kind of an eye-catcher. I will try to keep my eyes forward. After that, I turned my head to Abby's booth to check in on her once more. However, when I did, she made direct eye contact with me as she was taking a bite of her pasta. Yet the overwhelming and surprising shock of seeing me as a female again made her choke on the food a bit. Not to the point where she needed the Heimlich maneuver, but enough to raise concern in Damien and cause a bit of a stir. So because of this, all of the humans will see me, right? I quickly asked. Of course. I mean, you don't exactly look like the original form I gave you, but it's enough to fool the humans. Why do you ask? Because I need to do my job. Duty calls. I will be right back. Stay put. And I stood up from the table to approach Abby. Before fully stepping into view, I realized that Damien wasn't going to recognize me and that I had to act like I didn't know him. However, I wanted to ensure that my protector child was okay after her choking episode. I know I could have just asked her what's in her head, but I also felt the need to walk away from Satan for a brief moment to catch my breath. As much as I didn't want to admit it, he was actually right to give me this disguise. If he wouldn't have, he would have been seen as a guy sitting and talking at a table by himself. It brought the least amount of suspicion and I had no clue the changes even happened. If I would have used my shape-shifting, who knows if people would have seen the red transforming smoke. Regardless of the comprehensive logic he used this time around, he was still not swaying himself to be on my good side. Anyhow, I made it to Damien and Abby's table as she was holding her chest while he gripped his girlfriend's arm in worry. I placed my hand on her back and spoke to break their silence. Excuse me, miss. Are you okay? I heard you choking from across the way and wanted to ensure no life-saving assistance was needed. Abby immediately shook her head and coughed a little more to clear her throat. No. <clears throat> no. I am fine. I just breathed in my food accidentally. She will be okay. Thank you for checking in on us, though. It was very kind of you. Damien said, acknowledging my courtesy. You're welcome. Have a good rest of your lunch, you two. Upon the ending of that, I began to turn myself to walk back and heard Abby within my head. Darius, Darius what, what the, the hell, hell happened? happened? Why, Why do you, do you look, look like, like that? that? And who, and who in the, the world, world is sitting, sitting at your, at your table? table? Who do you, who do you think? think? It's, it's Satan. Satan. He said he, he, said he wanted, wanted to evaluate, evaluate and chat with me. With me. He's disguised, He's disguised as a, as a human, human and gave me this form again, again so we can blend in. in. Oh, oh, for, for fuck's, fuck's sake. sake. Will, Will he, he ever, ever give, give you a rest? rest? Not, until Not until I die in the demon, demon realm. realm. Yet he would, he probably, would probably find a way, way to torture, torture me then, then too. too. But, that's but that's not, not the point. point. Don't, Don't focus, focus on what I'm doing. You just keep having fun with Damien. I will catch up with you later, understand? Okay, I'll try. I'll try. But, but if you, you need, need anything, anything please, please say, say something. something. After her remark, I didn't respond back. For at that moment, I was staring at Satan again as he was drinking his alcoholic beverage. You're a protector child, okay? He asked with a stern voice. Yes, she just accidentally inhaled her food and choked for a brief moment. 
but regardless, all is well. Well, good. While you were away, I also took the liberty of ordering our meals. I picture you as a steak kind of guy. So I got you the 24-ounce sirloin smothered in onions and mushrooms. Then for the side, I said you would have the mashed potatoes. Was I correct in guessing that? I mean, yeah. But you actually planned on eating up here? Where would you get human money? Don't you forget who I am. He said, setting down his drink. Upon the question, I wanted to smack him again and tell him I could never forget his cruelty. However, I stayed silent and allowed him to have his teaching moment. Because of who I am, I have the power of creation. The ability to create anything out of nothing. Just watch. At the end of his instruction, I stared down at the top of the table as he floated his hand above it. Then after a few seconds, a blue force protruded from his palm and created a hundred dollar bill. To be honest, I sat there quite amazed at the phenomenon. Out of my experience, I have never seen Satan create something on his own. He always needed some sort of assistance. So it was interesting to say the least that he was able to make human currency appear with just a thought. Have you always had that ability? I asked. I gained it once I became Satan. Only two beings have the power to create things. The first one being that no goody two-shoes up in the bright sky. However, the other one is whoever is the ruler of hell. You haven't been the ruler this entire time? Of course not. He said, chuckling. I would be damn near a million years old, and I look too good to be that age. I've only been Satan for 665 years, still in my prime. So if you don't mind me asking, what did you do before you were the King of Darkness? Well, I was the scum of the street. Nothing but a worthless beggar because no one ever gave me a chance. I've tried getting a job at all kinds of places. Construction, glass blowing, woodsman. No one would take me. So my parents and brothers starved while I begged my way into money. This went on for several years, and once I was a young lad, our tent that we camped in ignited in flames with my family inside. They all died on the spot while I watched that bastard of a ruler laugh in mockery. Now you have nothing holding you back, he told me as he walked away. I was devastated. However, rage and revenge filled my body more than the sorrow for my mourning. So using the very knife my father gave me, I ran up behind the oblivious buffoon and stabbed him square in the head. Right through his temples. Soon after, he fell to the ground and his black blood spilled on the stone while the citizens stared at me. From that moment, my old assistant Melvis took me under his wing and showed me how to rule. I adjusted some things here and there, and eventually made it my own. But since that day, I felt nothing but power flow through my body. Everyone now feared the scum that rose up into being the king of the demon world, within a span of 66 seconds. No more begging for me. Now it's ruling an entire kingdom at my discretion. As I listened to that awful and tragic tale... I was finally starting to understand why Satan did the things that he did. With being nothing but a homeless person for his childhood, no one treated him with respect and judged a book by its cover. If no one gave him a chance back then, why would he give them one as he was the most powerful being known to hell? It's a horrible thing that happened to his family, and he can at least say he got vengeance for it. Yet to me, all of this information drove me to despise him more. Because of his past, he was making all the citizens of hell suffer in worse ways than he did. He also purposely preys on the innocent humans with his binding deals and tears their lives apart just like he did with mine. 
All of that may have been rightful judgment within his eyes, but in mine it was a multiplied punishment that would be served to innocent souls far within the future. I'm sorry to hear about your past, sir. It really is a shame. He had no right to do that. I stated, sounding a little remorseful myself. I'm not going to say it's okay because it wasn't, but I do appreciate you hearing my side of things and not arguing with me about it. That's what matters now. So thank you for lending your ears. Another brief silence commenced between us again for about a minute. Despite the saddened mood, Satan decided to switch the topic and move on with his evaluation. Now that I answered some of your questions, can you maybe answer some of mine? Depends on the question you ask. As long as I have the answer to it, I can respond appropriately. But would you reply honestly? I truly am just trying to understand things and ensure you two are in good hands. I'm just trying to help. Well, you have a funny way of showing it. I said within my head. Although that was how I wanted to respond, I instead said, I will answer truthfully. He nodded once at my cooperation and propped his arms up on the table to begin his Q&A. Since when did Abby obtain wings? Around the time you visited me within Abby's room as she was sleeping. I believe it was around Halloween time for the humans. How is she handling them? Moderately. It goes in spurts. One minute she likes them, and the next she wishes she never had them. An average reaction from her is what I call it. Has she broken them in and tried using the wings? Under my supervision, she has. That way, if something goes wrong, I'm there to help her retrieve her. Does that mean you have wings as well? No. I ended up getting levitation, which was a wiser choice. Can you imagine how chaotic it would have been if I gained wings along with her? At least levitation is easier to control than two flaps on your back. That was a lie. Whoa. Someone's been a book nerd, huh? Satan scoffed. But you are perfectly right. It would have been chaos, and you haven't come running to me for answers. Regardless of that, is that how Abby got to hell when we had our billiards game? I would assume so. She was up on Earth when I fell to hell. She must have followed without me knowing it. Another lie. Great. Any other powers she gained? Nope. At this moment, the lying was getting to me regardless of who I was talking to. I hated lying with a passion to where I wanted to claw myself for doing so. Yet with all of this, I knew I had to continue giving false information to protect her and I. Alright, I trust you. Now, my next question may sound random. However, I need to ask it to ensure more good is coming out of this than I think. I immediately raised an eyebrow to him as I was anticipating an inappropriate question. Despite my reaction, he asked it still. What is an aspect that you have learned while being paired with your protector child? Excuse me? What? I asked with muse. You heard me. Tell me at least one life aspect you have learned since being paired with Abby. Something that you didn't know about until this partnership began. Upon the question, I sat and pondered a bit. Satan never wanted me to answer such intelligible questions. Yet here he was asking this one. So, somewhat delighted to... I answered his question with the first idea that popped in my head. I learned the ins and outs of dairy farm life. Give me specifics. Well, for starters, I learned the milking process for a dairy cow and what is exactly used for it. They use pre-dip and rags to clean the teats. 
Then, once they're clean, an automatic unit goes on to each one and pulsates to squeeze the milk out. Then, once the machine senses no more liquid is coming out, it's detached from the udder, and then they are post-dipped with an iodine substance to prevent bacteria from entering the teat. Wow. Wasn't expecting that to come out of your mouth. He said surprised. That was only the basic summary of it. I didn't even get into mastitis or twisted stomach. Now that last one I could rant about because the cow goes through a medical procedure and I've seen it done. It was quite interesting. Alright, alright. I get your point. Congrats, you passed the evaluation. At that moment, the waitress came just in time with her meals. Satan got the exact same thing I did, except his was the biggest piece of steak on the menu. Besides the point, we sat in silence for the rest of the time as we began to eat. While using my fork and knife, I grossly watched Satan devour his steak with his hands. He ate as if he had to win the food-eating contest or was fighting for the meal. It was absolutely disgusting and made me want to lose my appetite. However... I just kept my focus on other things while savoring my meat. Again, the steak was cooked to perfection and was flavorful. The mashed potatoes also were great and complemented the meal nicely. Every once in a while, I eavesdropped on Abby's conversation to see where they were at. They ended up ordering dessert and took longer to dine at the restaurant, which was perfectly fine. Eventually, both of us finished our lunches and the waitress came around with our bill. Keep the change, Michelle. Thank you for your service. Satan said, giving her the hundred bill. She, of course, was very cheerful about the generous tip, but wished us a good rest of our day. Once she was gone again, Satan spoke a final time. Thank you, Darius, for the outing. I'll see you again some other time. Then, within a blink of an eye, I was back to my normal self, and he was gone. Darius, Darius, we're about, we're about to, to leave. leave. Are you, Are you okay, okay to come, come along? along? Abby asked within my head again. Yes, yes. thank, thank goodness. goodness. He's, He's gone, gone, and I'm, I'm ready, ready to, to move, move the hell on before, before my brain, brain turns, turns against, against me. me. I'll, follow I'll follow you to out. out. And so, according to my word, the happy couple got up to leave and I followed them to the car. After lunch, Damien Abbey stopped back at his house to say hello to Miss Haynes again and talk for a little while longer. As for me, I tried to stay focused on their conversation to not allow my thoughts to roam. I know what happened this afternoon wasn't pleasant and complex, as Satan somewhat pretended to care about my situation with Abby. Yet he did give me information about her intangibility power and what I could expect from it. That was at least a plus side to my afternoon. Time eventually flew by and Damien drove us back to his girlfriend's house around 4.30pm. The lovebirds wished each other good night while I moved myself to the door of the garage. Their affection lasted longer than usual as the young man pulled his woman into him and kissed her. Both of their eyes were closed as Abby wrapped her hands around his back. As for Damien... He held her tenderly within his arms while a slight groan murmured in the air. With that sight alone, it made my mind flash back to the night of my first date with my wife. I dropped her off at the stoop of her apartment complex after a night of dinner and dancing. The night air was chilled to perfection to where I handed her my blazer to cover up with on our way back from the festivities. Nala appreciated the gesture, and I led us down the sidewalks with her arm linked in mine. We shared in each other's company and dwelled in merriment. It was actually one of the best times of my life as I was pulled away from my studies to converse with this talented lady. During the walk, I felt my heart falling for her with each spoken word. My mind so connected to hers while my body relaxed in her presence for some miraculous reason. I've never felt such strong emotions towards another being like what I developed with Nala. Yet I didn't want to act upon it too soon, as it was still our first official outing as a couple. 
Regardless, once we got to the correct building, I allowed her arm to unravel from mine. I had a really good time tonight, Darius. She said, facing towards me. I did too. I loved every moment of it. We definitely need to do it again sometime soon. That would be delightful. How about tomorrow? Whoa, really? You want to go that badly with me already? I said with surprise. Why not? Live on the spontaneous side for once instead of doctoring yourself to death. It will be good for both of us. Upon her response, I couldn't help but smile and stare into her beautiful eyes. Just the look alone made me melt and bend easily to say, Your wish is my command, Nala. I'll see you tomorrow, then. At my response, I bent down a little and brought the back of her hand to my lips to wish her good night. However, upon the action, her face shifted a little into suspicion, and she raised her eyebrow. What is it? I asked nervously. Did I do something wrong? No. But I have a feeling you wanted to give me more than just a kiss on my hand. Well, I, uh, would. But I just don't want to rush things. With those words in the open, she chuckled slightly and grabbed my red striped tie that was around my neck. From there, she gently assisted me down to give her the proper kiss we both wanted. That particular moment was like magic. I can't even describe what physically happened to me, but it was a feeling I longed for every time I was with Nala. That kiss lasted for about 30 seconds, but it felt like hours as we shared in the affection. She broke away from me afterwards and left me stunlocked. I'll see you tomorrow, Darius. And she walked up the stairs into the apartment building while I stood on the sidewalk already in love. Darius! Snap back, please! A voice shouted randomly. As that yell ran through my ears, I quickly refocused myself and saw Abby having her hand upon my arm while Damien's car was gone. There you are. You were really zoning out just now. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Seeing you two in love just sparked a memory of mine, I guess. I'm sorry. I stated, apologizing. It's okay. I was just a little worried. You were frozen in place and I had to shake your arm to get you out of your own head. What memory did you recall? The night of my first date with my wife. At that moment... I turned the doorknob of the garage door and began to walk to her room while my human started interrogating me. Well, don't stop there. I want to know what happened. Was it a good memory? Of course it was. We had a lovely night involving dinner and clubbing. At the end of the night, I walked her back to her apartment complex. Did she have a good time? Yes, she told me so. She had so much fun, in fact, that she said that we should do the exact same thing the next day. And before you ask, yes, I agreed to it. And we went out the next day. But what base did you get to at the end of the night? At that slang, I stopped dead center in her bedroom and turned myself around. I could feel how shocked my face had grown from her question. However, I was more surprised about the slang she used. You kids in the modern ages still use that kind of lingo for how far you get with someone? Yeah, it sounds better than straight out asking if you took someone to bed. First off, to answer your question, I made it to first base. I wasn't going to rush anything. Second, since we are on the topic, we can talk about how you went to fourth base with Damien today. Immediately upon the subject, her cheeks turned bright red while her eyes practically shot out of her head. Without warning, she turned around and closed the door, as if to block out eavesdroppers. Then as she leaned against the door, she began to shrug and hesitantly speak. Are... 
You proud of me? Having sex, especially for the first time, shouldn't be about making me proud of you. I already am. But I need to know that you didn't have intercourse with him because of that reason. Please tell me you did not do the deed to make me proud of you. No, of course not. I don't know what to tell you. I wasn't expecting to talk about this to anyone, especially my demon who caught me in the aftermath of it. Well, we're definitely going to talk about it. Did you use protection? Of course we did, Darius. I'm not that naive. Damien had them in his car and he grabbed one. Did he check to make sure there were no holes? Were they out of expiration? From what Damien told me, they weren't expired, and I don't know if he checked for holes. Why does that matter? Do you want to get pregnant at this age? I exclaimed. I understand that condoms are not guaranteed to work because they can fail about 3% of the time. But again, those are very rare cases. If he used it correctly and used a fresh one, it should be okay. But I want to be sure. Oh my god, Darius! She scolded. I will be fine. It was a new condom and I'm sure Damien took precautions. Another thing... You should know better than anyone that I am on birth control, and not because of having sex. I... I don't feel comfortable talking about this particular part with you. I won't get pregnant and we were safe. Move on, man! Okay, fine. Next question. Did he pressure you into having intercourse? At that moment, Abby's eyes immediately darted at my face in fury while her body tensed in anger. No, he didn't! What in the hell made you think something like that? I don't know. You can't judge a book by its cover. You should know that by now, especially because of Chad. Damien is nowhere near being like Chad. He has been my best friend for years and has never been like that with anyone. Another thing... You were the one who kept telling me he was a man that I wanted in my life as a lover. Do you seriously think that after all the observation you did, that he would ever do something like that to me? What has gotten into you? Upon finishing her outrage, I began to pause myself and think about her questions. My mind was filling itself with suspicion from this one circumstance. He was trying to believe that she was pushed into an uncomfortable situation and was forced into that position. Yet as her words circled in my head, it kept telling me that she willingly took this step with her boyfriend. For some reason, I instinctively thought the worst of the gentleman and believed he tainted this pure soul of a woman. Why it went to those horrendous ideas, I had no clue. However, as I now stared down at Abby, I began to see a tear begin to shed down her face. She was absolutely torn about how I viewed her boyfriend at this point, and that sorrowful feeling in my chest overwhelmed my body with remorse. I knew very well that an apology was needed to be said, as I was firmly in the wrong and hurt my protector child's feelings. So trying to hold back my hardship... My mouth started to speak my amends. Abby, I am very sorry. I have no clue why my mind went to those assumptions, and I have clearly hurt your feelings. I supposed I just thought badly about it because of both of our pasts. I also didn't have an understanding of how comfortable you were with going that far with him. From the bottom of my unbeating heart, I apologize for my accusations. I understand if you want me to leave you alone for the rest of the night because of my actions. Whatever you want, I will do. She eventually wiped away her single tear from her face and stayed silent after my response. I supposed she was thinking about what she wanted. Yet despite my problematic and hurtful behavior, 
Abby startlingly lunged herself into me and wrapped her arms tightly around my body. Upon the action, I hesitated a moment. However, I quickly realized her embrace was a hug and circled my arms around her as she spoke. Please stay. I forgive you. I know what happened to you. What happened to them? I asked curiously. It was your fatherly love again. Except it was for a daughter instead of a son. My dad is the same way. You just want what's best for the girl you're protecting. It's okay. I understand. Thank you for your kindness and thank you for caring so much. At her response, I stayed silent and allowed the quietness to fill the air. I didn't quite understand what she meant by the different aspect of my fatherly love. Yet I guess I wouldn't because I never truly had a daughter-like figure in my life until Abby came along. This was extremely new to me. But I was going to have to learn these new emotions and actions in order to keep myself in control. For the time being, though, I kissed Abby on the top of her head and held her close to soak in the precious moment. This has been Chapter 16, Old Tricks, from the book The Forbidden Truth. Tune in to the next video for Chapter 17. Thank you for listening.